All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the drive-through for a special live taping edition today of the drive-through sponsored by a deli. Tired? Stop by a deli and get yourself a Diet Coke because I am so tired right now. So tired. All right, here we go. This is 12-3 partial derivatives. What this means is that now that we have surfaces, which are functions of more than one variable, now we can take derivatives with respect to different variables, okay? And um, so I ask that in this video you focus first on the hows, okay? So how do I do this? And then the second part of the video I will do my best to explain the what, meaning what is this doing? What is this telling me? So that's how we're going to break it down, okay? So um, let's just start with one. Given this function of several variables, this means find the first derivative with respect to x and the first derivative with respect to y. And the next page, we're going to focus on notation, okay? So don't worry if you're confused by the notation yet. I will do my best to explain that to you on the next slide. So here's what you're going to screw up. In fact, some of you actually did this on the last test wrong. When you were taking the derivative of, um, it was like VO cosine theta T, and you were taking the derivative of this with respect to T. A lot of you guys did like uh, negative VO sine theta T. Uh-uh. The derivative of this thing with respect to t is v o cosine theta. It's like the derivative of 10t is 10. So what I'm telling you is that when you're taking the partial derivative of this function with respect to x, you treat y like it's a constant. So that's going to be 3 minus 2xy plus 6x squared y. Yep, I think that's okay. Everybody okay with that? f sub y is going to look significantly different. The derivative of 3x with respect to y is 0. Okay? The derivative of negative x squared y with respect to y is simply negative x squared. Okay? Does that make sense? Oh, shoot. That should be acute. I read it wrong. Thank you for your confused faces. Okay? So far, so good? All right, now we're going to look at the notation of this. Okay, so we'll start with just two dependent variables. So these are indeed surfaces. So these will be z equals f of x comma y. Okay? This is my favorite one. So that's the partial derivative with respect to x. You will also, in your, especially as you move forward, so like in our class, we will almost exclusively use that. It makes the most sense. But for whatever reason, and I think it's because of differential equations, and differential equations is the next step of all this. Any of you that are interested in engineering, it's going to be one of your first classes you take. Okay? Um, and when you use differential equations, you start to like you start to like multiply each side by dy here. So you start breaking up these differentials. These are called differentials. Okay? So just ignore this for a second. So here we go. We can also call this the derivative with respect to x of f of x, y. Okay, so that's another way to write it. 
we can also call it fx of xy, which is unnecessary. We already have f sub x. You could also call it z sub x. I like that one. Or you could also call it the derivative of z with respect to x. All of those mean the exact same thing. And so I always ask of you, when you move forward in math, don't be like me and get intimidated by notation that you don't understand. It's like the first time in your life you saw this. And you were like, Ken! And it like freaked you out. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. It's just new notation. Okay? All right, so that's the notation. Um, another thing from a notation standpoint is we're going to talk about, so look, this is a new, new piece of notation. We're going to talk about higher order differentials in a couple slides coming up. What that means is take the function, differentiate it with respect to x. That's going to give you another function. Take that function and differentiate it with respect to y. I have an answer for you about integrals. Okay? Then take that function and differentiate it with respect to x. So we'll we'll uh we'll practice that later. All right? So there's your notation. Let's see what we have next. Um now let's let's find oh let's see let's find f of xx f of xy and f sub yx i should probably shouldn't call it of let's take let's find the second order differentiation of the function with respect to x that's what this means so, to find f sub x, I'm going to first find f, to find f sub xx, I'm going to first find f sub x. So, that is 3y squared minus 10x. Okay? Who is that? You? I'm sorry. Yes. Excellent, 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 Shiva. Okay? Uh, because I forgot, the y squared is a constant. It doesn't disappear when we di differentiate. I can't tell you how many places there are for you guys to make silly mistakes here. Okay? F sub xx is the second derivative with respect to x. What's that? No, you don't. You don't take the derivative of with respect to y, you just treat y squared like a constant. Okay? So when I take the derivative of this thing with respect to x, the 3y squared is gone. It's a constant. It's a constant. Okay? So it is negative 10y squared. That would be our answer to that. Okay? Alright, now let's check out f sub xy. That means to find that, I have to do f sub x first. And we know from above, and thanks to Shiva, that it's 3y squared minus 10xy. Now the difference is, I'm going to take that and differentiate that with respect to y. So that's going to be 6y minus 10x. Did I just do that again? Jeez. Oh, that's going to be wrong then. Sorry. 6y minus 20xy. Is that better? Shiva? You think I did that right? Well, luckily, I have a way to check. Because here's a new fact. This will be important for you guys. Okay? It's, it's commutative. 
So I'll show you that right now. I'm not going to prove it to you, but I'll show you an example. To find f sub y x, we're going to start with f sub y of this. So I need to differentiate back up to the top that with respect to y. So that's going to be 6xy minus 2 plus 10x squared y. Okay, now let's take that and differentiate it with respect to x. 6y, right? The constant is gone, minus 20xy. Check it out. Oh, because I wrote this down wrong. Hmm, good question. All right, so the original was mistake was made right here, right? That should have been a plus, and they're all pluses from there on out. Plus, 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 and plus. Are we good now? This one, right? Now we're good? All right, Sabrina, so thank you. Let's try to make the point that I was trying to make before we messed up our algebra. Do you see it? Taking the derivative with respect to x and then with respect to y will lead us to the same function as taking the derivative with, the res with respect to y and then with respect to x. That's probably the most important fact so far, other than the fact that you treat the other like constants. Okay, so we'll finish with just a little snippet of your book so that I can try to explain to you guys what we're looking at, okay? So here we are looking at page 861 from your book. It says, find the slopes of the surface. Oh, nuts. Let's see, mousy. All right. Find the slopes of the surface, okay, given by this function. So, in the direction of x and in the direction of y. So, to find the slopes, we'd find the derivative, okay? So, the partial derivative with respect to x is negative x. You do negative 2x over 2. The partial derivative with respect to y is negative 2y. When you plug in the point, uh, x equals 1 half and y equals 1, this is what you get for the partial derivative with respect to x at that point. So, unfortunately, this didn't scan all that well, but you can see that this thing is a paraboloid. And what you have to imagine, what you're finding is the slope of the tangent plane at the given point, but if you can imagine, that tangent plane has different slopes depending on what direction you want that slope to run in. We want to make this plane um, we want to slice this paraboloid with a plane that is parallel to the x-axis, and what that gives us is this tangent line right here. This tangent line represents the slope of the tangent plane in the direction of x at that point. All I want you to see is that it's negative, and maybe if you look in your book, you can see that it is not nearly as negative or if the slope is not nearly as steep as that line at that point that's in the direction of the y plane, the y axis, okay? The x the z y plane. Okay? So that's what you're finding. You are finding the slope in the direction of the x z plane when you do this. And here you're finding the slope 
in the direction of the YZ plane when you're doing that. And that's just a good enough start to let you guys try some of these for homework. You feel like giving me a boom or you want me to boom? Let's, it's an optional boom on three. One, two, three. Boom. Thank you.